back again with another video. Uh, I had a young brother named Dominic Brown hit me up on my last video. Uh, Dominic, thank you for responding. I really didn't understand what your question was. So if you want to put another comment on that video on this one, that would be cool so I can understand exactly what you were saying. I really didn't understand what you were trying to tell me. This video is on turbulent relationships. Just got off the phone with a lady who wants her lover back. Uh, at the beginning, the relationship was turbulent. Um, it was violent. And that's why I'm bringing this up. Um, I want to clear the air. I had some people wanting to know why after 18 and a half years I left from NOPD. This is the reason. People don't realize how many times in metropolitan cities the police get called to home where you walk through the door. The woman's laying on the floor. He shot the man, shot her, or stabbed her to death, or strangled her. Opposite, you walk through the door. The man's on the floor, blood all over the place. You stabbed him to death, or shot him. Why? Because for all the years they had been together, they had that southern spirit in them and was going out and playing. I guess the topic of this video is everybody has a breaking point. People reach their breaking point when it's like that in those relationships. Now, these are good people, never been in trouble with the law, or now looking at when the homicide detectives get there, you automatically charge a second degree murder. When you get to trial, the district attorney drops it down to manslaughter. Um, when they put you on the stand and start questioning you, was it ever violent? Did he ever hit you? No, never did. The jury is listening to this shit. If you can't prove you got the crap beat out of you a lot during all these years, you hooked and booked and cooked. At the end of the trial, you found guilty, second degree manslaughter. Now a good person is looking at five to 25 years in prison. Okay? Why? Why are you in a relationship like that? Why are you coming to root workers and spiritual workers asking to bring this lover back, male or female? Why? If it's violent, why are you doing this? Back to the old thing I said before in many of my videos, ooh, but I love him. That's some strong ass love. Here's some love for you right now. 2006, we responded, we responded to a suicide. It was at the Royal Omni Hotel. Young man threw himself off the uh, top floor, committed suicide, young white man. We got there, secured the scene, the crime scene people showed up, the detect homicide detective showed up, started checking the body, found a note on him. The note simply read, I had to take my life for the life I took. Gave us the address, where to go. Crime scene was still working on it, Detective handpicked three other units that was there to go with them to the uh, next scene. Address was 826 Rampart. Remember that. 826 Rampart. We get to 826 Rampart. I knew the location. The bottom floor was a voodoo temple. A voodoo store and temple. On top they had apartments. Went around the back. Went up the stairs. And you could feel something out the way. I mean you could feel it. It felt like you was walking into quicksand. It was a very small apartment. I was behind a detective. The detective walked in. Immediately we wound up into the kitchen. The oven he had spray painted don't look. There are two pots on the stove. The detective went to reach out for the lid, looked at me and said, I don't want to do this. He lifted the lid up and there was the head of the girl his girlfriend. He had been boiling her for six days. He lifted the lid off the second pot, her hands and feet was in there. Opened the oven door that said don't look. He had severed her arms and legs and baked them. Knew the rest of her body was somewhere. Opened the refrigerator door, the rest of her torso was in there. I went about five steps, it was a very small apartment to the bathroom area. He had spray painted on the wall, I'm sorry I couldn't finish it. He tried to clean the tub up. It was blood coagulated all over the place. They had a diary that was laying on the bed that he put, read this, it was her diary. The last entry was the day before he had strangled her. And he started writing in a diary. 
that uh, they had an argument. They had been in a turbulent relationship. She caught him messing around with other women. Now they both were bartenders at different bars on Bourbon Street. This couple was well known during Katrina. They stayed at their apartment. I think it was on General Myers. They moved to South Rampart. That part of the city was raised up. That part of the city didn't flood. They stayed there. They became national news of the young couple that stayed and rolled out the storm, Katrina, which if y'all don't know, Katrina, it almost wiped the city off the map. I mean, to this day, there's uh, construction sites, business and residential where they're still digging up human remains from people from that storm. I'll get back to topic. He said he felt no remorse for a woman that he loved when he strangled her. He said that he knew he had to end his life because of the life he took. Same thing he wrote in a, his suicide note. And he took the money that they had in savings, it was fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars, I think, and had the best party, drank the best liquor, the best drugs, the best strippers. He uh, wrote in there that uh, he had sex with her four times after he killed her. He performed necrophilia upon her body. Last time he passed out on the side of her body. Didn't know what to do with her, so he decided he was going to cut her up. Cut her up. Cut her head off, put it in the pot. Cut her hands and feet off, put it in the pot. Cut her legs off, put it in the oven and cooked it, put the rest of her torso. Now he was running around Bourbon Street like nothing happened. Was going to take care of himself after he finished the money. I couldn't understand when he wrote on the wall in the bathroom, I'm sorry I couldn't finish it. It really bothered me. I mean, you could see seasoning that he sprinkled on her arms and legs in the oven. You could see that. I was worried that he performed cannibalism on this girl, too. Well, after the autopsy, of his autopsy, they found out that there was no human remains in his stomach. He didn't. But it made me wonder what the hell he meant by, I'm sorry I didn't finish it. Was he going to finish cutting her up and bring her to one of the bars he worked at? as a jambalaya for everybody to eat. I don't know. So, there was pictures of a young girl in her apartment. I could see what she looked like before what she looked like in the pot. Him and her together. So, uh, I excused myself, went back downstairs, went outside, I lit a cigarette. A couple minutes later, the detective came down, he asked for a cigarette, I gave it to him, he said, man, that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life, and I'm standing there like, no shit, all right? And I knew this detective, never worked with him on a homicide scene, but I seen him in the district, never worked with him, I knew of him. He stopped, looked at me and said, Rodney, I know you're a full voodoo priest, you need to tell me, please, please, please tell me voodoo wasn't involved in this because of the voodoo shop downstairs. I told him no because there was no evidence in that small apartment that I would have picked up on as soon as I walked in. The temple downstairs had nothing to do with it. Two reasons. One, if it was a spirit that latched itself upon him, the last thing it let him do was to harm that girl. And the last thing it wanted to do was to harm himself because they was feeding off their energy. Wipes that out. The detective told me thank you because they want to know. And I know what he meant by they. The detective commander, the homicide detective commander, the district commander, the, uh, this, uh, the uh, deputy chiefs, the superintendent, the mayor, all the city councilmen, and a lot of business people, and plus the news networks. But still to this day, they'll beat their drum on that, that maybe Voodoo was involved. Why? Well, I understand because Voodoo, that's shit like that sells, okay? Madame Dolphine Lalaurie House is on a tour, okay? They'll sell. See, I understand that shit. Back to the point of breaking points. We all have one. A lot of people find theirs in special and turbulent relationship. This young man found his when I walked out that goddamn door. I found mine. Couldn't do it no more. Couldn't. Couldn't. told the uh, sergeant that, they brought me in after the shift, 
sat down, the uh, lieutenant, the district commander. Now he's sitting there with the uh, photos of the crime scene on his desk. Understood. He said, look man, you got a fine outstanding record, we don't want to lose you. Take three months leave of absence, go talk to the Department of Shrink. In three months, if you come back and do it, open arms, we won't say anything, come back to work. No, nothing said. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Because I thought, when I seen her, at one time, that was somebody's little girl, that was somebody's child, that was somebody's love of their life. Nobody deserves to die like that. So, what I'm trying to tell you is, your stupid moves in a violent relationship will bleed off to a lot of other people. Leave. Leave. That's all I need to tell you. I shouldn't be standing here telling you this shit. Leave. I ain't got no love involved, but I love him. No. Uh-uh. It don't work. You don't love him. You attached. Break the attachment. If you got children seeing this, you're raising these children seeing this, and in their life when they grow up, they think that's how it's supposed to be. Because mama and daddy went through this. Okay? Break the shackles of this bullshit. Now, you can call me with a turbulent relationship. I don't know if I'll take the job or not, but if I do, I'll tell you once they come back, that will last three to eight months before they start playing again. After I'm finished, I'm going to block your number. I don't want to talk to you no more. I don't want to hear years down the line that one of y'all found your breaking point and I knew I was involved in it. I'm still bearing the cross from them. Okay? I'm not going to give you all the details of it. I want y'all to write this down. Zach Bowen. Zach Bowen. And Addie Hall. Addie Hall. That's all you need to type in Google. And after you read it, let me know how that worked out for you.